Next, we have to find um, the deflection at point A. So this is load P. Again, this is a problem for classical theorem. So this first theorem that is delta is equal to rho u by rho p. So the complexity involved in this problem is just because of this arc. So we have this. That's the only part that is complicated in this problem. So first is we'll consider this arc. You can see here. So we have this arc. This is point A. I can put this as point B. So we consider the moment. The moment is goes into distance. Okay. So the distance as per se is not um, this is not a straight bar. So we have to either convert, yeah, we have to convert this problem into a problem that involves the radius and angles. So if you can consider this uh, triangle, this really small triangle, let this angle be theta. I mentioned here, yeah, the radius is r, that's given. Okay. So this distance, this distance is given by r cos theta. And obviously this distance is r. So this small distance x is r minus r cos theta. You can take the r out, we will have to r into 1 minus cos theta. Okay. So next is uh, if I directly substitute that equation to r here that is we will get p square r square 1 minus cos theta the whole square by 2a into dx. So the integrand is different from what is to be integrated that is um, we have to integrate in this case we have to integrate x square with respect to x but here uh, we can't integrate r square or cos theta with respect to dx so for that what we do is we convert or we differentiate this equation and we get dx is equal to obviously uh, minus cos theta is sin theta d theta so we get r sin theta d theta so that's what we have here so we will substitute p square by 2 a into r square into 1 minus cos theta the whole square into r sin theta d theta. So obviously we have r here, r here. Obviously this is a constant, we can pull out the constant terms. So this is half of the circle, so we will it from 0 to 5. So the difference, there is no difficulty in integrating uh, this term. So ignore the uh, limits here. For like a minute, uh, so we will just substitute cos theta is minus cos theta is u. So if we differentiated this, differentiate this, we will get sin theta theta is d theta is equal to du. We just substitute it back that is 1 minus cos theta the whole square sin theta d theta is so will become 1 plus u the whole square du. So it's a very simple integration. We will get this term. We reapply the limits when we reapply theta, so we'll get something like this. So we know that cos phi, we, we apply the limits cos phi is minus 1 and cos theta is 1. So just applying the limits, we'll get 8 by 3. So the strain value of the arc is 8 by 3, p square r cube by 2 a, uh, 2 and 8 will get cancelled out to 4 by 3 square r cube by e1 i1 if we have two different materials. So next is we consider the free body integral of this beam or this rod. So obviously if we shift this load to this point we have a moment and a axial load. What we have here that is moment would be m is equal to 2 pr it is force into distance and the load. So for the bar we have um, the same equation that is 0 to L 2 PR the whole square dy this is in y direction to E2 IP and this is for uh, this is for bending this is for axial loading so 
into some kind of integration, we will get this equation for the first three integer of the bar. Total three integer, we can sum it up. And then the last step is by Cassegrain or cross the integers differentiate to get the differentiate the three integer with respect to P to get the uh, deflection at point A.